Hello my fellow oddities, welcome to a new video. Now Mortal Kombat has a lot of unique and diverse characters that have many different abilities and backgrounds. And while yes, it would be pretty cool to say these were completely original ideas made up all in the minds of Ed Boon and John Tobias, that's just not true. Mortal Kombat has been influenced by many different things in many different cultures, specifically stuff like world history and ancient mythology. Getting even more specific, the main two cultures that it draws from are Asian cultures and mythologies, as well as American pop culture. So today we're going to be discussing what influenced the Mortal Kombat characters, starting off with MK1. If you guys want to, then I can make more videos on MK2, MK3, and so on. So the first character we'll be talking about is of course the main poster boy in Mortal Kombat, the most popular character, Scorpion, aka Hanzo Hasashi. Now Scorpion is one of the shockingly few ninjas in Mortal Kombat that is actually a ninja. Now ninjas are a pretty well known concept, but I'll still explain it for anyone who doesn't know. Ninjas were covert mercenaries operating in around 15th century Japan, which the games are pretty accurate to seeing as Scorpion is Japanese. And Scorpion's most iconic weapon, the kunai, was kind of something that the ninjas actually used, but not really in the same way. They would mostly use it for hand-to-hand -hand combat, sometimes use it as a throwing weapon, but they would never really attach it to a rope, throw it at someone, and then say, Get over here! Well, even if they did do that, they wouldn't say, Get over here. They would say, But the series more recently has been getting more accurate with this, as Mortal Kombat 11 has Scorpion using the kunai as a hand-to-hand -hand weapon, as well as the Mortal Kombat 2021 movie. And fun fact, kunais were originally designed as a multi-purpose gardening tool. This can be seen at the beginning of the Mortal Kombat 2021 movie where Hanzo's wife uses it for gardening right before her and her son get brutally murdered along with her husband a few minutes later. <laughs> Speaking of which, after Hanzo dies, he gets resurrected in the Netherrealm as a Spectre, which is very different in the Mortal Kombat universe compared to how it's typically portrayed. Traditionally, Spectres are pretty much just ghosts, but clearly a Scorpion is not a ghost. You can like physically touch him. Well, you can't because he's not a real person, but if you were in the Mortal Kombat universe, you could physically touch him. I mean, how would you even fight a ghost anyway? Anyways, I'm getting kind of off track here. In the Mortal Kombat universe, Spectres are characters who die but then get resurrected with new Hellfire abilities spawning from the Nether Realm. And there's three other ways to be resurrected within the Mortal Kombat universe. There's Wraiths, which are very similar to Spectres. They're characters who die but then get resurrected with Shadow and Darkness abilities also spawning from the Nether Realm. Then there are Revenants, who are characters who die and get resurrected with the same powers and abilities that they had before four, but now they're like servants to probably an evil person. And then finally, there are zombies, which are bodies that get resurrected, but without a soul. Moving on to the second most popular character in all of Mortal Kombat, Sub-Zero, aka Bihan, or also aka Kwai Liang. I don't know which Sub-Zero I'm talking about specifically, it's just in general, Sub-Zero. Now first with Sub-Zero, we're going to be talking about the Lin Kuei assassins, which is the clan that he is a part of, and this is probably the most shocking discovery I made while researching for this video, and it turns out the Lin Kuei might have actually been a real thing. And when it comes to accuracy, it's basically just one-to-one, -one, a secret clan of Chinese assassins that eventually inspired Japanese ninjas. But they themselves are not ninjas, so don't call them that, or else they'll probably get angry at you. Well, Kuai Liang would probably just correct you in a nice way. Bihan would rip out your spine and then say something edgy. Death is the coldest ice. Which, you know, is why he's my favorite Mortal Kombat character of all time. Speaking of spine ripping, Sub-Zero's iconic fatality that created the ESRB was inspired by something that the Predator does in the Predator movie. And then the Predator showed up in Mortal Kombat and MKX, so that's neat. Next up, let's talk about the main character of Mortal Kombat, Liu Kang, who, yeah, pretty obviously is inspired by the martial arts actor, Bruce Lee. In fact, the movie Enter the Dragon, starring Bruce Lee, is actually the main inspiration for Mortal Kombat's story, as that was about a martial arts tournament. And seeing as Bruce Lee was the main character of that movie, Liu Kang became the main character of Mortal Kombat and was the one to win the tournament. Liu Kang is also a Shaolin monk, who are people who practice Buddhism as well as Shaolin Kung Fu. But Liu Kang doesn't really take the whole Shaolin thing too seriously. I mean, look at his head. That's a full head of hair right there. Shaolin are supposed to shave their heads, so I don't know. But this makes sense for the character as he did leave the Shaolin for a while to live in America before the whole Mortal Kombat tournament started happening. Liu Kang also sometimes uses weapons in nunchucks, but these aren't really a thing in a Shaolin's arsenal. So once again, Liu Kang's connection to actual Shaolin culture is kind of questionable, but you know what? So is a razor hat that can slice people down the middle. Who cares? It's cool anyways. Liu Kang's fire abilities come from his inner chi, not from his arcana. 
Oh God, I hate saying that word. Oh my gosh, my brain, ah! Chi and developing an inner energy is something in Shaolin culture, but obviously in the Mortal Kombat games, it's way exaggerated. As far as I'm aware, Shaolin monks are not able to throw fireballs at people. As far as I'm aware. And the next character we'll be talking about is Johnny Cage. Now Johnny was not really inspired by any ancient history or mythology because he's literally just a Hollywood actor. But the story behind what he was inspired by is actually a pretty interesting one and is kind of what led to the creation of Mortal Kombat as a whole in the first place. Before the original Mortal Kombat game was made, the company Midway, who created the Mortal Kombat games from MK1 to MK vs. DC, was supposed to make a game based off the movie Bloodsport, which was about some fighting tournament or something, I don't know, I haven't seen it. Now for whatever reason, this game never ended up happening and it was scrapped, but it was eventually turned into Mortal Kombat. So in the first Mortal Kombat game, as a homage to Bloodsport, the character Johnny Cage was created, who was based off of the actor John claude Van Damme, who starred in the Bloodsport movie. And the similarities straight off the bat are extremely obvious. Beyond the fact that they're both Hollywood actors with extremely similar first names, John claude Van Damme in the Bloodsport movie wears a very similar attire to what Johnny Cage wears in the first Mortal Kombat game, and they do the same move. You know the one. And funnily enough, when the first Mortal Kombat movie was being made, John claude Van Damme was one of the actors being considered to play Johnny Cage, but he ended up turning down the role to be in Street Fighter the movie. Really good movie. Really not good movie. Excellent career choices. Moving on to the next character, we have Special Forces Major Sonya Blade. Now Sonya, of the characters on this list, is kind of the one with the least interesting inspirations to her. She's based off of the martial artist Cynthia Rothrock, which is an awesome name, but that's really all there is to it. She was also probably inspired by Sarah Connor from Terminator 2, but we don't know for sure. And other than that, she's a part of the US Special Forces, which is a real thing, so I guess that's somewhat of an inspiration. Don't remember the last time that they had to deal with our realm merging into another one because the leader of the other realm got salty that he didn't win a fighting martial arts tournament, but... You know what, close enough. And because Sonya is a part of the Special Forces, that means she has to deal with the crime syndicate, the Black Dragon, led by the next character we'll be talking about on the list, Kano. Now the most iconic trait of Kano is his laser eye with the big metal plate around it. This is inspired by the Terminator when he's like battle damage and part of his real robot face is showing. Now Kano's name is actually of Japanese origin and it means one's masculine power and capability. Now if you mostly know the version of Kano that we get nowadays, then this really does not make any sense since Kano is normally depicted as a white Australian, but originally he was supposed to be half Japanese and half American. This was all changed after the first Mortal Kombat movie and Trevor Goddard's performance as Kano, where he was actually trying to go for a Cockney British accent. Hello baby, did you miss me? But it was mistaken for Australian, so now Kano is like the most Australian man ever. Top knot, the end. What's his name? Kung Pao. Pass us a fucking egg roll, would you? And this actually changed how Kano's clan was depicted as well, the Black Dragon. Originally, it was supposed to be more similar to the Yakuza, but now it's mostly depicted as a weapons-dealing crime syndicate. And finally, Kano's famous heart rip fatality was inspired by a scene in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, where someone's still beating heart gets ripped out of their chest, so... How pleasant. And the next character we'll be talking about is Raiden, the Thunder God. Now Raiden is definitely the character on the list with the most influences. There are a lot of different things that inspire this guy and make him who he is. So let's get started with the fact that this guy is a Thunder God named Raiden, which is very, very, very similar to a Thunder God in Japanese mythology called Raijin. Fun fact, Raijin's brother in Japanese mythology is named Fujin, and Raiden's brother in Mortal Kombat is also named Fujin. I don't know why they changed Raijin's name, but not Fujin's name. Shouldn't he be called Fudin? Well, that's a pretty dumb name, so I understand why they didn't change it. But as you can see, beyond the fact that they have very similar names and are both thunder gods, these guys don't even look similar in the slightest. So what inspired Raiden's iconic design with that awesome hat? Well, the look of Raiden was actually inspired by one of the characters in the John Carpenter movie, Big Trouble in Little China. There's actually three of these guys, and together they're called the Storms. Raiden shows the most visual similarities to the character Rain, while his abilities are more inspired by the character Lightning. Obviously. Fun fact, the name Rain would later be used for a different Mortal Kombat character named... Rain. Now Raiden is a god, a celestial deity and worshipped being, and 
the concept of gods is kind of something that's across many different cultures and religions and mythologies that you can't really place one that Raiden is specifically tied to, besides of course Raijin. But Raiden is not the only god. There's also Fujin, the elemental gods from Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub-Zero, and also technically Shao Kahn is supposed to be a god, but I don't know, that's kind of confusing at this point. Some people are saying, oh, he's not a god. Some people are saying he is, so I don't even know at this point. And of course, the concept of multiple gods is something that's across many different cultures and religions and mythologies and stuff like that, though it isn't as present today as it was in ancient times. One of the mythologies that had multiple gods was North mythology. This mythology also probably inspired the different realms of Mortal Kombat with the nine realms of North mythology. Speaking of the realms of Mortal Kombat, there are seven of them that we know of right now. There's Earth realm, which is... Earth, you probably know what it is. Be a bit concerned if you didn't. Are you an alien? Are you an alien? There's Outworld, which doesn't really have a clear inspiration for it. It's kind of just this dystopian alien planet. There's the Nether Realm, which is based off of Hell, which has many different forms across many different cultures. The Nether Realm is home to demons, Onis, and even sorcerers who kill you and your entire family disguised as someone else so that when they resurrect you, you kill someone else instead of them. But then it all backfires on their face when they stupidly decide to tell you that they were the ones responsible for your family's death. Okay, sorry, I went off on a tangent there. Jesus. There's the Order Realm in which law and order is above everything else, and if you do not follow the exact set of rules that we set in place, then you shall be banished! And then there's the Chaos Realm where you can basically do anything you want, and there are literally no expectations because anything could happen. Is that a dog with a turtle shell on its back riding a hoverboard across a lava lake? Like I said, anything. And then there's Adenia, which is based off the Garden of Eden, so it's super happy, and there's paradise, and there's Greek buildings, and statues, and it's super sunny outside, until Shao Kahn has to come and ruin it all because he hates fun. And then finally, there's the Dream Realm, which is a subconscious realm that you go to when you start dreaming, and like the Chaos Realm, pretty much anything can happen, because anything can happen in your dreams. But unlike the Chaos Realm, the Dream Realm can't, like, directly affect you in any way. You can't, like, I don't know, get hurt or die in the Dream Realm. Well... That's unless you're being hunted by a certain son of a hundred maniacs. Oh wait, I almost forgot. This, this isn't Robert England Freddy. This is, this is the lame Freddy. So he's not a son of a hundred maniacs. He's just some random gardener who also happens to be a p <laughs> Moving on to the sub boss of the first Mortal Kombat game, Goro. Now the idea of a humanoid having multiple arms does have precedent in mythology, specifically with the Hindu goddess of destruction and time, Shiva. Fun fact, the name Shiva would later be used for another Mortal Kombat character with four arms, Shiva. Goro is also half dragon, half human, and that does have examples in specifically Chinese and Japanese mythology. But these examples don't really share too much in common with Goro other than the fact that they're half dragon, half human. So at the end of the day, Goro is mainly an original creation. Moving on to the last character we'll be talking about today, and the main villain of the first Mortal Kombat game, Shang Tsung. Shang Tsung's most clear inspiration is Lopan from, once again, Big Trouble in Little China. Man, I have to give it to John Carpenter. Not only is he responsible for one of my favorite movie genres of all time, but he's also partly responsible for how Mortal Kombat is depicted today. Lopan was this evil, conniving sorcerer who wanted to rule everything. So basically just Shang Tsung. Like, this might be the most one-to-one -one accurate thing on this entire list. Like, they're basically the same character. And Shang Tsung's main ability, stealing people's souls, or should I say... Sucking people's souls. He's about to get his soul sucked. It's also something that's present in multiple mythologies. Many mythologies and cultures say that demons steal people's souls, and a certain type of vampire within Chinese mythology also takes people's souls instead of stealing people's blood. And that's pretty much it for influences for the Mortal Kombat 1 characters. I had a lot of fun making this video, and I am very excited to do this with more characters going forward. I'm particularly looking forward to covering the Adenian characters, especially with their very unique weapons. I'm interested in learning the history of things like Katana's fans and Rain's Katar. Katar with a K, not guitar. Rain doesn't fight people with a guitar. That's stupid. I'm also interested in learning the influences of the cyborg since they're like a mix of a lot of different things. And I'm also really interested to look into Nightwolf's background, especially since there's some debate in the Mortal Kombat community whether he is a good or bad representation of Native American culture. But yeah, overall, really excited to continue this series. Make sure to like and comment down below if you want to see future parts of this video. Also, make sure you're subscribed and have the notification bell turned on. And with that being said, that's it for this video, my fellow Waddies. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you.